and welcome to a new watercolour tutorial. Today I've got this creepy Halloween scene of these jack-o'-lanterns to show you. I'll be doing it step by step in real time and everything I'm using will be listed in the description below the video. And this line drawing is available on my Patreon page. It's completely free of charge to download. I'll put the link below and you can just print it out whatever size you like. I'm going to go with this larger size. So I'm using a full sheet of this Archie's watercolour paper. It's very good paper, I would highly recommend it, or some other high quality, like um, cotton watercolour paper, it's usually the best. So I've traced it using a light box onto my watercolour paper, and I'm taping it onto a board. If you haven't got a board to tape it to, you could just tape it to your desk, but it stops the edges curling up when the paper gets wet. Okay, so first of all, we need to make up the colours. These paints are schminky watercolour paints um, you just use whatever you've got just pick similar colours to what I'm using so the first colour I'm using is Indian yellow it's a really rich warm yellow um, the next one that I'm using is chromium orange hue or it's just like a bright orange a real mid bright orange this next colour is sepia so it's a just a really dark brown like the darkest brown you can find and then also neutral tint which is better than black because black tends to kind of muddy your colours also make quite strong concentrated mixes of these colours because it's going to be dropped onto wet paper so it will get diluted once it hits the paper okay so I'm just testing the colours out on a piece of paper just to see if they blend well together and I realised I wanted a much darker orange as well so I've gone for this trans orange so it's just basically a really strong orange heading more towards red it's very vibrant okay so they all work really well together it's a nice collection of colours and they're all blending really nicely okay so to get started you need to wet the paper so i'm using a mop brush here because it holds a lot of water and you can get that whole page wet really quickly so you just want a nice sheen on the page you don't want any puddles you so if you tipped it up you don't want the water to kind of run so you just got to find that nice balance so the first colour I'm going to go in with is some sepia and I've just got it on the mop brush and I'm just flicking a few sprinkles on the paper I really want them to go outside the picture um, and then they will just like spread over the next few minutes they'll spread out because the paper's wet now I'm getting some of the neutral tint and I'm adding a lot more water to it I'm making it really watery and I'm doing that in a separate little well and I'm also doing the same for the sepia. So I've got two different colours in a really watery mix. And then I'm just dabbing it just around the outside of the pumpkins. And I'm just, just a random fashion, but mainly around the outside of the, the pumpkins. And then just a few little dabs further out. And then a little bit towards the bottom. Now this will this will fade even more as the page dries. This is just our first layer. I will as as we put more and more layers on, add more and more little flicks to the outside. Okay, so now on to the pumpkins. This is the Indian yellow. So this is just the base layer. It doesn't really matter what it looks like it's just so that when we put the next layers on and we leave little bits this is what will show through on the other little bits that we've missed so we just kind of want to put that towards the middle of the pumpkins because that's going to be the lightest part so this is our lightest color so we'll just do that for all three pumpkins and if you get any little puddles just soak it up with a tissue okay so I'm also going to put a little bit of that colour underneath as well and 
bear in mind that this paper's still wet. When you get good quality cotton paper, it will stay wet for quite a while. So you can keep working into that paper while it's still wet. So now onto the trans yellow, sorry, the trans orange. This is the brightest orange. And I've just put a few little dots underneath and then I'm just adding some random streaks and I'm going with the shape of the pumpkin. But we don't want like uniform perfect lines in between each groove in the pumpkin because we want it to be like a nice loose style. So if there's any bits you don't like, just absorb them back up with a tissue. Like at this stage, it really doesn't matter what it looks like at this stage. Now I'm adding some of that colour that I've really watered it down again and I'm, I've just added a few dots to the outside. And I'm just kind of manipulating this because I just want it to look quite random but still kind of going with the shape of the pumpkin. Um, this is what it looks like dried off. Most of those flicks that I put, if you can see, they've all just kind of joined into one, which it doesn't really matter because like I said, with each layer, we're gonna add more and more random blobs and flicks into the background. So I wetting the whole page again, but before I did, it was absolutely completely dry. Now you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer, or you can leave it to dry on its own. Um, so I've re-wet the paper now, and now I'm just adding another layer of like random orange parts. So I wanna leave some of the lightest color. I wanna leave some patches. Because they just like leave really effective highlights at the end and it looks really nice. So you just need to maintain some of those lighter parts. That's the aim for this layer. So this is the Indian yellow again. And I've changed to this Cotman round brush. I think it's a size 6 Cotman round. The really nice brushes, these ones. But I will list all the brushes and everything in the description below. So I'm just doing that with all three pumpkins. And I'm leaving mostly the edges because they're going to be a much darker colour. So it's just kind of random streaks in the shape of the pumpkin, but then missing parts out. So this is the darker orange, but not the darkest orange. So I'm adding some little pieces of this as well. Yeah, so once you've wet cotton paper, it'll stay wet for quite a while, as I was saying before. If you get um, a non-cotton paper, like the cheaper watercolour papers, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't get a nice result, you can. It's just that the cotton paper is easier to work with because the other one will dry a lot faster if it's non-cotton. And it just makes the whole process a little bit harder. You, you tend to be able to get the paint to look how you want it with a cotton paper, I find. And I think it's because it dries evenly. It doesn't dry in patches. So I just keep adding darker and darker oranges in like a streaky fashion.
But the most important thing is to leave those lighter parts because it looks so effective at the end when you've got your little white highlight. Not, not white because we've painted it Indian yellow, but you know, the, the highlights that look really nice at the end. If you have a contrast, really dark darks and really light highlights, it really makes the picture pop. Okay, so now onto the darker colours at the outside. So this is the sepia brown. So we're going to make it really dark at the outside and then add some little patches in some of the grooves towards the middle, but less and less as you get towards the middle of the face. And then we're going to add a lot of dark to the bottom, but we'll just keep building this up in various different layers. So these are wet in wet layers and then once we've done these base wet in wet layers, the do, the do fade when it dries. So once it's dry, the last layers that we'll do, we'll do wet on dry and then the paint will be much stronger. It always looks so much nicer when it's wet and then when it dries it always fades a little bit and the paint's kind of moved on the page and it loses its vibrancy so this is where you have to keep building more and more layers and eventually you'll get the vibrant result at the end. But you do need those kind of non-vibrant dull parts because they really set off the vibrant parts when you put the wet on dry paint on the later stages then ones will be much more vibrant but you need a combination of both because if it was all really vibrant it just wouldn't work and you can see the paints kind of like spread out over the top I'm just kind of I've rinsed my brush off and then dried it so I've got like a damp clean brush and then I'm just kind of tidying those edges up. Now I'm adding some really dark paint underneath. I think I'm still on the sepia at this point and we just want to add it like scruffily so this is like a shadow on, from the surface that the pumpkins are sitting on and then the little orange bits that are dropped underneath will kind of give the effect of a little bit of reflection onto that surface a little bit of orange reflection um, now I'm at this is the neutral tint which is our darkest color I'm adding some of that underneath but again just in a really loose fashion and then we're getting some more watery paint and I'm adding some blobs so it's more like dirty water some flicks and some blobs and then I've dried the whole thing off again so now we're on to the face we're going to paint the face in so I'm painting some clean water on these ridges at the bottom and then using the neutral tint, I'm painting the top parts of the eye. And then where I've put the water, it'll be more faded. And then we'll add another layer later on when this is dry, just to darken the back part. So, because we, we want that little the ridge at the bottom to be a lighter colour so that you can actually see it. And I'm doing exactly the same for the nose. I painted a little bit of water on the little, I don't know what you call it, I'm just going to call it a ridge but it's like the thickness of the pumpkin. 
yeah so we just want that little bit to be lighter and then onto the mouth so I didn't paint any water on the ridge of the mouth I just we're just gonna have like a hard edge here so I'm just really very carefully going around the pencil lines so all we want to paint here is the inside of the mouth not the teeth or the edges of the teeth so it's quite tricky you've got to use the point of your brush and just be really careful it looks good if the paint is different tones as well or different concentrations so it's not like one uniform color so some parts are a bit more watery than others you can see there i've just blobbed in some much darker paint and it's just kind of spreading out and it, it just gives a nice watercolor effect now i'm adding a layer of the i think it's neutral tint i'm sure i'm using neutral tint for these dark parts if i hadn't already said that so leaving the ridge out painting another layer on the rest of the eye to make that little ridge stand out and the same on the other eye as well and also the nose and then i'm doing the same for the smaller pumpkins but i've switched to a smaller brush it's a little tiny rigger brush and there isn't as many details on the smaller pumpkins like they don't have the ridges in the eyes and the nose um, just on some of the teeth the bottom okay so now on to the stalks of the pumpkins so i'm using neutral tint again um, and i'm back with the cotman brush and i'm just carefully filling this in and these parts are wet on dry, by the way, so this is straight onto dry paper. And it's a fairly strong mix of the neutral tint. And then I've dried my, so I've rinsed my brush out, dried it off so it's just damp and then I'm just kind of like spreading that out a little bit into the pumpkin at the bottom but mo it's mostly going to be covered up so um, it doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm just roughing the edges up a bit because they were just too neat and I didn't want that finish so I rinsed my brush out again dried it off so it's just damp and clean and then just wipe around the edges so it's just kind of rough those edges up a little bit um, now I'm going in with the trans orange which is the deepest most vibrant orange um, and I'm just adding some vibrant sorry some vibrant parts Again, just random, and it's wet on dry, so it's right onto the dry paper. Again, try not to cover your highlights up. And then I'm just making some of the edges kind of roughed up a little bit, some of them smoother, using different colour orange. And then I flick a little bit of water onto the whole thing just to try and give a few little watermarks in the paint while it's still a little bit wet. And now I'm adding some darker streaks using the sepia and I'm um, doing the outside edges, making them nice and dark. And then you can wipe some parts out as well, like I did there, just to take away some of the paint that you've put on. Okay, so for the rest of this section, I'm just going to speed it up a little bit because I think you can still see exactly what I'm doing. But it's just going to make the video really long, so 
and it's quite repetitive so I'm basically just adding darker areas I want it to look all like streaky and like really gnarly and loose I'm adding much much darker colour underneath the pumpkins so the shadow where the pumpkin meets the surface and I'm making it messed up and if you saw that I just flicked some water on top of it while it was still wet and it'll make it look even more kind of messy and then I'm doing exactly the same for the smaller pumpkins that I did for the larger pumpkin so I'm just trying to get those shadows really really dark but still pre preserving some of the vibrancy and again the darkness to the outside and the bottom of the pumpkin and then much lighter to the pumpkins the middle of the pumpkin's face and more kind of like above yeah it's tricky to know how much to leave in to tutorial videos because you want enough information so people can follow it and actually do the paint and um, but some some parts are really repetitive uh, or there's nothing left for me to say so the better off just speed it up but you can still kind of see what's going on so now I'm adding some more splodges just dirty water splodges and flicks into the background I'm kind of like trying not to put two, there's there's two spiders that I'm going to paint in um, and I'm trying to leave the area around those white. I'm not putting much background colour in those uh, because they're going to be black and they'll stand out if they've got if they've got like a surrounding white background. So I'm also flicking in some of the orange and the yellow as well into the background. And now I'm painting in the spider. If you can call them spiders, they're kind of a spider bat hybrid. I wanted to like give them loads of legs to make them like really creepy, but it kind of went a bit wrong. Some of the legs kind of joined onto each other and ended up looking like a bat wing, like this one here. So it kind of looks like it's got loads of legs on one side and then a bat wing on the other, but it doesn't matter. It looks really creepy, which is what I wanted. So. Okay, so now we're going in with our darkest layer. So it's wet on dry, using neutral tint in quite a strong concentration. And then we just want to kind of go around the outside in the curves following the edges of the pumpkin. And we really want to get it really dark. So this will be mostly to the outsides of the pumpkins, to the bottom of the pumpkins. And then I'm just wiping more bits out. If you if you want to wipe if you want to wipe parts out like this, again, wash your brush off, dry it so that it's just damp, and then you can scrape the paint out. So when you paint on strong these strong lines of the dark colour and you've got those really hard edges that's a good way of softening those edges up as well so go back in with a clean damp brush and then go over those edges and it's a really good way of making like a rough blend between you know it gets rid of that hard edge like I did with the stalk of the pumpkin when I just dragged a damp brush right across the edge and it just breaks up that horrible artificial line so here at the bottom I'm just putting paint on then pulling some of it back off and I'm carefully going around the, the kind of the front of the the face to make the, the edges of the teeth stand out if you can see they're like a lighter yellow so I've made that like a dull color underneath and that makes those edges of the teeth stand out. And then I'm, so I'm just doing the same kind of techniques for the smaller pumpkins as well. 
So on the ridges of the eyes, um, I want them a little bit darker. They need to be more shadowed. So I've got a, a, a watery concentration of the neutral tint and I'm darkening those ridges because they would be a little bit in shadow. So that makes that look a bit better. And then I think I'm just adding a little bit more stronger colour to the top. Just drop that in wet in wet. And yeah, and then I'm also darkening the mouth part. Um, it would be a lot darker because it's like shadowed inside. I'm just kind of doing it to the top to make the top teeth kind of stand out as well. And then I'm just doing exactly the same for the nose. Okay, so now I'm going in with the neutral tint again. Again, wet on dry, so the paper's completely dry. And I'm adding these swirly streaks onto the stalk. So more towards the bottom and then just some random curves. Kind of like C shapes and S shapes. And then I'm adding a little bit more darkness to the edges and some of the grooves in the pumpkin. If you look at those dark edges that I put in earlier, they've kind of faded quite a bit. So I'm just darkening them up a little bit more. And then I do exactly the same for the smaller pumpkins. So I'm just basically looking over it and then any bits that's like faded where I wanted it to be dark, I'm just going in with more layers of dark until it's the, the dark tone that I wanted. Also, if your colours are looking a bit dull in certain areas, you can go in with some stronger, vibrant colours like I am here. It looked really dull and lifeless at the edge of that pumpkin. And I wanted that edge to stand out. So this pumpkin on the left that I'm painting now, I wanted the edge to stand out against, so it's like in front of the large pumpkin. And it was just like really dull. So just added a little bit more orange vibrancy into that edge to make it stand out a little bit more. And then if you look on the other side, where the right hand small pumpkin, the edge on that one is dark. So it just adds variety if you change things up like that. And everything's not just the same. Um, now I've got some stronger colour. But it's not really strong, it's quite watery, but stronger than what we've put on before in the background. And it's more of a dirty orange tone. And you can see I'm just, I've just done like random shapes and blobs. Um, so that's multiple layers of blobs and splashes that we've put in the background at every stage. Um, it looks really effective at the end because you've got all the different shapes, the different tones, the different colours, the different sized blobs. And yeah, I think it looks really effective. Okay, so now I'm going to, all the painting's finished with the watercolour paint. And now we're going to add some extra details at the end. So there I've got a white pencil, a black pencil and a white Posca pen. So I'm roughing those edges up even more, trying to, but the paper wasn't fully dry, so it really needs to be fully dry, otherwise the pencil just slips. So I had to go in there with the heat gun and make sure the paper was bone dry. So this is a Prismacolor black pencil. Um, it's quite a good dark black for, for a coloured pencil, so, but obviously just use whatever you've got. Um, I'm just emphasising all the edges, the dark edges, and I'm going over the edge to, to give it like a scruffy, scratchy, sketchy look. So I'm darkening those grooves like in the um, stalk there. Um, I'm darkening these pencil marks, which kind of like adds a little bit of movement into the picture. I'm adding some webs that the spiders are hanging from and then I'm roughing up the edges as well of those stalks 
I do it like around the edges of the stalks and around the edges of the pumpkins in the grooves of the pumpkins and it's it just gives a lovely sketchy finish and I wouldn't recommend using a graphite pencil for this because they look great and then when the sun shines on sorry when the light shines on the graphite pencil it's it's shiny and like a dark silver color um, so I would definitely recommend a black colored pencil for this so I'm kind of tidying up the edges as well with this black pencil and really darkening that shadow underneath the pumpkins and then just add more and more sketchy lines. If you see that one just goes over the outside of the pumpkin. I think it looks really nice. So I was quite pleased with how these pencil lines turned out. I think it really finishes it off nicely. You do Your pencil does wear down really fast though, so I did have to keep... Um, sharpening it a couple of times because the watercolour paper is so rough it really takes a lot of that pencil and Prismacolor pencils are pretty soft so it wore away quite quickly so I'm just adding some little wispy ends to the millions of legs on these spiders and because it, the outside of the spiders the, it's those hard lines I find if everything's got like a hard line around the outside it just doesn't really look good so I'm um, roughing up some of the edges of the spiders as well and just adding some more sketchy lines so now I'm using the white pencil and I'm making some of the highlights even lighter and then I'm also just adding some random streaks again, just in that same curvy kind of fashion that we did with the black pencil and all the paint, just going with the shape of the pumpkin. So it's just nice to have some odd little white bits in the dark bits. And just kind of place it wherever you think it looks nice. But it's good to use it like to break up large parts of the same colour. So now we're on to the white Posca pen. And you can see I accidentally dropped a, a big blob on the large pumpkin. But it looks quite good. So yeah, I'm just using this. Kind of the same as the white pencil. Only a lot more sparingly. And this just adds even whiter highlights. So you don't want to overdo it. It's really difficult not to overdo it, but try not to overdo it. So I'm making some of the highlights even whiter and then just some little random scratches here and there. But it's always going with the shape of the pumpkin and the shape of the um, stalks. And I've also added some little dashes all over the spiders as well. And now I'm outlining, very roughly outlining, the eyes and some of the features. So that kind of brings it all together. So I added a few random lines to the top teeth. And then I'm really emphasising the edges of these bottom teeth to really make them stand out. So I'm just kind of colouring coloring in most of the top part that's facing upwards and then just adding a few little lines to the edges and I think that works really well. Okay, so we're almost at the end. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope people have followed it and done the painting themselves. That would just be brilliant. Um, if you have enjoyed it and you found it useful, uh, please give me a like, subscribe. It all really helps. It will really help me grow my channel. Um, I think YouTube pays a lot of notice to stuff like that. Like if you can leave a comment 
all the interaction that you can have on your video really helps. It, it means that YouTube will show your video or suggest your video to more and more people and that would really help me grow my channel. So the last thing to do is just, I've got the largest mop brush and I'm just carefully adding some splashes. I'm just, I'm holding the brush quite high up so that it makes the, the um, splashes a little bit bigger and some of them went on the face. I mean, they don't look bad, but I did dab it off with a tissue. So I hope you like the picture. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've painted it. And thank you so much for watching.